No, us as Ravens fans, we used to the Ravens being broke. We used to these boys not having no kind of money and no funds. But it's usually for a good reason because they usually spend to or around the cap. And what I mean when I say that, they spend the funds that they are, they have allocated on players, on signings, on extensions, on contracts. So they spend the money. It's not like they're broke for nothing. No, they're broke because they go out and buy it. And especially last year. Like last year was my favorite year uh, with EDC as a GM because last year he got aggressive with it. He made a lot of deals happen. And he even went to the void. Year. And void years is something that was, you couldn't even speak about that as a Ravens fan. So I was happy to see EDC really incorporate that. And he built this team good enough to win it all. He did a phenomenal job last year, and I loved it. So, again, EDC, great job last year. Shout out to you. With how you did wide receiver should have happened earlier, but it is what it is. But last year, the team was good enough to win a Super Bowl, but, well, yeah, you know the rest of the story. So, this year, the Baltimore Ravens, um, it's another offseason where they find themselves a little strapped for cash, but the salary cap, it jumped up to, what, 255.4 mil. So, I think it increased, like, like about 30 mil uh, However much it increased It increased by a lot Cause you know Hey in the field They made that money So when they make that money They like oh yeah 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 We'll give y'all more salary cap space Thanks Taylor Swift Anyway The Baltimore Ravens um, They have some decisions to make But one of the biggest decisions That they have to make That has is, is being talked about And should be being talked about Because it is a big decision to make It's Justin Matter BK and with Justin Matabike, he is going to be a very expensive player, no matter how you slice it. Because uh, there's been a lot of talk about, oh, are the Ravens going to, what are they going to do with Justin Matabike? Are they going to sign him to a long ta- long-term long extension? Are they going to franchise tag him? Are they going to let him walk? What's going to go down with Matabikes? Well, um, we're going to talk about that in just a minute. But before you do, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, turn your notifications on. We almost at 74K. We're getting there slowly, slowly, super slowly. But it's okay. Slow growth better than no growth. But make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on, and leave a like on the video. So, uh, with Justin Matabike, um, it will cost the Baltimore Ravens $22.102 million. So, about $22.1 million if they just want to apply the franchise tag. And you know, with a franchise tag, like, there's no... Uh, we'll put some of that $22 million here. We'll put some of it. No, that's all on the cap now. You cannot maneuver that. You cannot change that. Around. No, that's all on the cap now. And for a team that has limited resources, of course, you can create more resources. You can do restructurings and all that. And you know, Ravens are going to be doing some restructurings very soon because they do it every year. It happens all the time. But um, that's a lot of money for Mr. Matabeeks. Now, um, they could also sign him to a contract extension. If you sign him to a contract, it, well, not a contract extension because he ain't got no contract no more. He's getting ready to be a free agent. But if you sign him to a contract, then that allows you to manipulate that money a lot more. So that gives you a lot more flexibility. And, of course, like with him being such a good player, especially last year, that's what you want to do. Because you cannot be cheap with talent. If you want the best of the best, you got to pay that bread. But, see, this is where it gets tricky because not for necessarily for Justin Matabike, but just for NFL teams in general because – a lot of teams have a lot of great players, and you can't keep everybody. A lot of teams have a lot of good players. Like, everybody in the NFL is a, a phenomenal player because they're in the NFL, and they're there for a reason. They are the top 1% in the world because not a lot of people make it. There's so many people that put in all this training. They go to extra all these extra classes and courses and sign up for all this stuff throughout their entire lives to try to make it to the NFL, and a lot of them don't because it's hard. It's tough. So for the ones that do make it, yeah, they are something serious. And a lot of it's right place, right time, right circumstances, who you know. But anyway, um, you got to pay for talent, but you can't keep all your talent. Because, again, we remember the Baltimore Ravens after the first Super Bowl. They were like, all right, hey, we, we want to run it back. We get it. We want to try to keep everybody. All right, cool. And that messed them up for years because they retained a lot of their guys, but – Messed them up salary cap wise for years, um, so they have certainly learned a lesson, and and we see that every year. Um, we see it where 
teams will be assembled nice. It's like, oh, they got a roster. But then the following year, it's like, oof, where'd that guy go? Oh, he's there. Oh, where'd that guy go? Oh, because you can't keep everybody. But with Justin Matabike, uh, I think we all expect the Baltimore Ravens to retain him because it's essential. That, that is something that they definitely need to make sure they get done because Justin Matabike just wanted to play. Now, he's going to be expensive. Again, either way, whether it's franchise tag or contract or franchise tag, then contract extension, he is going to be a lot of money. And with him, like, he ain't got to settle. He ain't got to settle for nothing. And see, it, it, it takes us back to before this offseason or last offseason because Ravens tried to get this thing done. They knew. They knew. They smart. They tried to get the deal done with him before the season even started because they knew. They knew what they had. But he didn't agree to no deal. And he had a wonderful season. And his price skyrocketed. Skyrocketed. Went through the roof. And see, with the Baltimore Ravens, they got to be real careful with Justin Matabike. Because you cannot, even though it was super weird, you can't play the Lamar Jackson game that you played with Justin Matabike. With the, the non-exclusive tag or the transition tag, whatever. I think it was non-exclusive tag to where it allows other teams to negotiate with that player. Again, with Lamar, it was very weird how that whole thing was. I, I know there was some stuff going on in the background. But anyway, with Matt Abike, um, you mess around and you do that to him. With the transition tag, I think the transition tag is where teams can sign him to an offer sheet and if they agree to a deal with him then you get two first round picks um there's that but then the non-exclusive tag is where teams can they can sign him to an offer sheet and i don't think you would get anything though or would you no i don't think you'll get anything but either way um you can't play those games because if you do <laughs> if you do that you might as well say hey justin thanks for the last four years but we'll enjoy you buddy but yeah man ravens got um and see what what, what makes it not necessarily trickier, but I mean a little bit. You know the Ravens want to keep Patrick Queen. Are they going to? I doubt it, but you know they want to. They would love for Patrick Queen to stay. So with Ravens, uh, you think uh, obviously Justin Matabike, he would be the number one priority or should be the number one priority because interior defensive linemen that create pressure and make plays and are productive, they are not easy to come by. They don't just grow on trees especially for the Baltimore Ravens. They've had a, it's been a long time since they've had an interior defensive tackle that has been productive and disruptive like that. Because they tried with Timmy Jernigan, even though I felt like they should have gave him more of an opportunity because I thought he was going to be really good. They tried with Brandon Williams, and he was just a run stuffer, but he didn't provide any pressure. With Michael Pierce, they tried with him, uh, but then he ended up going off to Minnesota. But then he came back, and it's like, okay, Michael Pierce, let's go, baby. And he's still with us now. But they haven't had that consistent guy since Lodi Nada. And Lodi Nada was from ages ago. So, with Justin Matabike, this is something that definitely uh, we want to all see get done because it is of the essence. Justin Matabike has to be a Baltimore Raven. If he's not, I don't even want to think about it.